guys, here we are in the finals where we have Nicholas Buffard versus Daniel Castle. Daniel playing the Han Droids deck we just saw, and Nicholas playing Dr. Afra, Watt Tambor, Sentinel Messenger with Brand Design. Two very strong decks in this meta. Have a look at these pictures. And we'll see how they match up here. So, of course, guys, once again, uh, you've got your same commentators here. Myself, Shaheen Shah Yazdani, and Steve Cassell. So, interesting side note. I won Canadian Nationals last year, 18 months ago. So, for the last 18 months, Dan has had to refer to me as the champ. And I can tell you that he is uh, really hungry for this win. Although, I do know that it was also his wish to be sitting there against you at this top table. But that being said, all the people in our top four are really strong players. So I've had no surprise to see any of them. Not that you aren't, Steve. Because <laughs> again, you were our former champ. Dan, I did face Dan in the third round. A uh, very close game. Uh, but he wrecked me. Uh, Nicholas, one of the top players out of Quebec uh, right now. Uh, so this is an uh, interesting matchup. One of the top players out of Quebec versus one of the top players out of Ontario. Two, definitely, arguably, two of the best players in Canada. For sure. I also like that Nick is using the new shield tokens he was just given yesterday. <laughs> so just to catch up, Dan won the roll, took mean, I'm assuming won the roll to take mean streets. Uh, has already played in a Rex Blaster, got a Fickle coming in with Nicholas, off a Watt Tambor power action. And the grand design. Oh, for the draw, of course. There's and the Ewok ambush. With Rex's blaster wall controlling, this should be pretty good. Oh, it's a lot of blanks, though. I suspect Dan will change that blaster to the two and start with six damage. Uh, he may want the double resources as well. Yeah. Uh, both good ways to start this game off. So there's the one or two. Yeah, you were right. Resources in three. I expect in general we'll, these games will go a fair bit faster than the top four did. Because we've got two fairly aggressive decks. Well, connected play. Dan, of course, takes his card. And Dan's... DX that has been doing so much work for him this weekend. I actually would love to have seen him play the card he drew. <laughs> Just to punish for the well connected. Oh, that does happen a lot. Well, there's a bubble shield. Nick's setting himself up. Fickle mercenaries and bubble shields, certainly not uh, what Nicholas wants to start with his turn. He's looking for his murder droids. Of course. Forsaken, which explains why the fickle. Oh. Yep. Dan grabbed the wrong card for discard and just corrected himself. <clears throat> Not a great reroll. Now, will Sentinel get a shenanigan? Will! Oh. There it is. One of two murder droids, all and right. That's, and that's what you want to do with that deck. Rerolls again, but leaves the resource this time. That resource basically equals a two range side with Han's power action. Fair point. Well, seeing an indirect come up on the blaster, it's not great when you're facing Afra. Fickle being resolved and currently sitting on the wrong card. I'm sure he'll notice at some point. Bubble shield for the droid. <laughs> Confirming the, the droid gets resolved on Dan's side. Four damage there for what? Watt is near dead. Standard start for Dan. Can't really hope for more. Nope. 
Probe for the last card. Oh, the droids stay out for his next turn. Yeah. Um, so done. Dandrak takes out the bubble shield. Afro comes up as damage. With no cards left, Nicholas will have his chance to do whatever he wants. Fickle for three for one, I believe. Resources to pay for the damage. Five damage. Yep. A lot of damage for Nicholas on turn one. Yeah, eight damage through versus Daniel's functional six. Uh, yeah. Right, and generally when I play against Dan, this is the part where he kills my character first action round two before I can do anything. Does seem likely. I mean, or he could just get all the resources in the world based on that roll, but that's unlikely. Yep. Resolving Rex like he should. Yep, there's the damage. C3PO to kill. <laughs> Faithful for the two resources. Rex's blaster is so powerful in this deck. Dan didn't even need the droid stay out he was trying to save. Nope. Although with it, he would have gotten Han in as well, right? That's right. Nicholas continuing to show big damage. Hasty exit. Much more useful in this matchup than the last one. Fickle on top face again, I believe. Dan is mostly tapped out. All right, shield. Try to keep that R2 alive. It's going to be difficult to keep R2 alive for the rest of this turn. Yeah. As she sees now at seven. One, one hit point left. And both Sentinel and Afra are still to roll. Dan doing some more healing. It's closer to all acrylics now. <laughs> Nicholas still with a full hand of cards. Oh, desperate measures. Yep. Dangerous maneuver. Sorry, dangerous maneuver. Thank so you. One. Thank you. You can tell I'm getting so. tired. <laughs> it's interesting though that he used it when he only had one damage. Yeah. So he took the shield off Afra, and I'm not sure where the second damage went. Well, there's only one damage healed. So there should have been two, two placed back onto the characters. Yeah, it looks like Nicholas dealt one to himself instead of two yeah. off that dangerous maneuvers. You are correct. Oh, both murder droids are down. Uh, so electromagnetic pulses taking out that 3PO droid on the focus. Dan didn't need the focus as he's showing perfect sides. Six into Afra. I'm 
Nicholas continuing to show big sides on his dice. Dan with the claim, but I don't believe he has any cards left. Does not look that way. But he is setting up mean streets to be just that much stronger if he needs it. However, at the same time, I, be I believe Nicola can trigger it as well if he ever claims. Yes. Switched his damage focus. Interesting choice. I guess he wanted to get him within one. I uh, know this deck plays active cruelty, so he may be wanting to make an active cruelty play. Uh, and also would be running Assassin Droid, which would do that one point of damage as well. True. Discarding the active cruelty, which would imply he has another one. Or at least some one of the others you've mentioned. Interesting putting the cannon there. There's, yep, you were right. Second act of cruelty. <laughs> Loses the 3 PO, but he did want to get that weapon down first. Hasty exit, a relevant, a card that would have been relevant for Dan, seeing as he's currently controlling. And showing no action sheets. Rex's blaster trigger. It's reasonable amount of damage showing. All but one die is damage. Yeah, I, I describe that as unreasonable. Oh, and actually with the power action, they're all showing damage. Yes. <laughs> Nicholas with one resource. I know this Afro deck uh, can be a little bit tight on money and doesn't play any big, uh, big expensive, powerful uh, removal. Nor does it play much to gain money, as Well Connected is the only card on that deck. I'm going to maximize value out of the Sentinel Messenger with all those zeros. Here it is. What's he going to show? Probe. The probe. That works. One of my favorite cards to reveal off of Sentinel Messenger, but not the best in this situation. Hitting easy pickings. Although dead. Dan had no resources, but could have used Mean Streets with it. Now, people are going to die. Yep, there goes Afro. Sentinel is injured. There's another 3 damage showing, which is not quite enough to kill Sentinel. Or functional 3 damage showing. Yep. Oh, and if he triggers the droid, he'll take more damage. Oh, there's the bubble shield. Yep, that'll help. Power action is expected. Triggering dangerous maneuver just to push it onto the bubble shield. So, of course, droids doing some damage. I wonder if this needs to show nine damage to finish Dan off. Dan needs to show three. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, mind you, not till next round. So Nicholas would absolutely like to end the game on this turn, and he can almost do it. Don't know what's in his hand. There's the claim from Dan. That's going to need a reroll. Yeah, the respite doesn't help him much now. One damage. Not quite showing enough. That is and a focus. focus showing he will be able to kill a character. Yep. And there goes the R2. 
However, Dan can still just roll in and win here. As he's only so at the, six. So the dreads stay out, the Ewok ambush won't do anything for Dan anymore. We'll be looking for one of his two instigates. No instigate play there, however. And no damage showing. This is where Dan, I'm sure, is happy that uh, Nicola is playing a villain deck, so no easy pickings on those resource dice. Covers the fickle, showing a discard, which is not threatening. Even if it came up threatening, Dan has the resources to buy it. But will he remember to is the question. I find most don't. Forsaken. That makes sense with the one die in play. Dan's just looking for damage. There's the damage. It's three, though. Does Nicholas have automated defense? Yep. One damage in. So we're four away and two away relative. With the BT1 activation. Dan looking to be one damage short. Flee the scene. Makes sense. Keep all the dice off the table if you can. I expect Nicola will just hard reroll until that shows damage. So Dan using his first pass here. Sentinel Messenger in. Not going to play it. Dan will use his second pass. Second fickle for Nicola. Riot Shield. And that's the damage that he needs. Dan with the claim on the flee of the scene. Second. Dan is. Wow. Best. Wow. Second flee of the scene. Just got to reroll. Still nothing. We try again for that one in six chance. <clears throat> that one in six will not kill Han this turn. But it gets him closer. So that they're both one roll off from winning. All depends what that card is, really. <laughs> yep. Does not get it. Dan really going to be looking for one of those instigates. So no instigate again. That's enough damage. So Nicholas will need to show two pieces of removal. Hoping to top deck something. That's not going to do it. No. Nope. I mean, it lets him kill himself. That's funny. <laughs> Very close. Very close game. Uh, excellent start from Dan. Nicholas almost brought it back. All right. Protecting R2. It's pretty much as good as anything else. <laughs> yeah, good choice. Uh, Dan does like to load up the R2. So, Watt Tambor power action for that assassin droid right off the top. Good play to start things off. As always, playing Afro, you're looking for that triple zero and that BT1. Um, but assassin droid has earned his spot as a very, very capable member of that droid army. Especially with the Watt Tambor. For sure. Nicholas going for Han first this time. Well, I mean, it's only one health difference than going for C-3PO, and he starts with two dice. Deciding not to use the card that Sentinel showed. Oh, there's the droid stay out. Nice. So that disrupt will not do anything, so I expect that will turn. Yeah, I would expect Dan... Using the second turn 
depending on his hand, but generally you want to build those resources. Stanley for shields. Very interesting choice. Yeah, that was unexpected. I was expecting him to push six damage there. I was expecting him to push six damage. Or perhaps the three and two resources like he did last round. It's the first time we've seen Dan so far on stream playing defensively. Yes. As well with no upgrade on turn one. True. Of course, going for Wat Tambour, as he's one of the stronger pieces. Assassin Droid Trigger. Field Medic, okay. A lot of defense from Dan this round. All right, showing the two range for one. No resources, still has Watt to activate. As well as a focus sitting on Sentinel. Looks like Dan passed there. Nicola power actioned the Afra. Or sorry, power action Thebe with Afra. Just to get a fickle. Interesting. Dan passing again. Okay, he's focusing up for higher damage. Putting that damage on, on. Another field medic. Well, now we know why Dan's playing so defensively. Yep, that's all he had. She does not make a good turn for a good opening round for Dan. So Nicola is getting set up, and Dan is stalling. He was able to get the damage that he needed. Uh, looks like Nicholas went for the claim instead of rolling in Watt Tambor. I like that play. Yep, as Watt at best gets you one resource, claiming keeps control, you go first, as well as resource potential. Power action off Watt, what are we getting? Oh, one of the murder droids. Of course, a grand design draw. Incredible value right there. I believe there was a cock die off screen. <laughs> Showing two resources, we'll be happy there's no easy pickings in this match from his opponent. Power action for two damage. Interesting. Automated defense to remove it. There's the instigate. It's true. Perfect rollout for R2, which allows him to switch the Han dice. And the Fateful Companions will be 6 damage onto Watt, which will kill him very much. Right. And also for those who are watching, should you wish to rewatch this, it'll be still available on Twitch for the next week or so, and it is intended to be put up on VTTV's YouTube channel once a little post-production work has been done, so likely in a week or two. Gotta get that high-level VTTV production value. Exactly. Let's see. Assassin Droid Trigger. I find it interesting that Dan has put his hand down just to show how many cards are left, even though he's not playing a mill player. Hmm. Flee the scene. Flee the scene. Dan sure loves to play that card. With good reason. Does mean he likely gives up the claim, but very much worth playing.
I expect Nikola here will likely use the power action for the resource. Likely. So this will be Dan's first pass. Uh, Nicholas appeared to have claimed. Oh. Rather than the power action. Also valid. It's likely just heat of the moment, miscalculated number of rounds or activations. Dan finally gets some upgrades. We're now now on round what three? This is round three. Oh, and both murder droids. That'll uh, speed up the clock here for Nicholas. Not a great roll, but at least he has the power action. Sentinel, I'm assuming not. I'm wondering what he's looking for at this moment. Fickle works. All right, there's the ambush. So now if Dan wanted to here, he could Fateful Companions to turn two of those dice to range damage, then use the ambush action to resolve it, as opposed to using the 3PO traditional. Looks like what he's doing. So that's giving us six that's damage? Six damage into Afro, very nicely done. And now, uh, oh, he's... Oh, he's doing five first, and let's see if he resolves that one or if he tries to get... He wants the power action again. to get more out of it. He needs to be on a resource to power action. Oh, true. And he so can only me... resolve the 3PO once. I'm respite on Doc Afra. So that he can plus one both of them. No, his Fateful was used as well. Oh, that was with the, the 3PO. Yep. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, that was... Yeah, Dan was hoping to hoping to resolve them both, like he normally would, but... However... They use the Fateful Companions. Yep. There's... Just actually ending on that dice. Just to keep Afro alive a bit longer and get a draw. All right. Nicola is loading up on those supports. The board's getting very wide. He's going to finish. He's going to need to finish this turn with a lot of damage. Yep. Let's see what he can hit here. Ooh, one another, good hit. Another flee the scene. There's the Chewie's blaster. I assume he'll take the damage to roll it in. Yeah, he did remove the shields. Oh, he's removing it now. Yep. Unfortunately, to a blank side. I'm actually impressed with how much damage Dan has put in with so little upgrades. Alright, rolling in with the two indirect damage that Dan took. He has one card left. He appeared to pass, didn't want to discard it to reroll. Nope. Which is forcing Nicola to have to consider what could be there and slow play one die at a time. Assassin Droid Trigger, of course. Looks like Nicola is trying to still set up an act of cruelty as he's doing damage in various locations. Or now focusing, okay. The only thing I can expect Dan would have in his hand, based on the way he's passing and not re-rolling or claiming, is maybe an electromagnetic pulse. He's waiting for a droid that he's concerned to show by. some damage. That's where he would pulse that too. There it is. You were perfectly correct. Discarding the deja vu paid off, two damage. And that'll be enough to take R2 off the board. Yep. Dan claims. At least Chewie's Blaster. Oh, it is. Nope, yep. that is the earlier version that had redeployed, not this version. 
That's actually quite unfortunate, as he killed R2 himself functionally. Yes, that one extra damage was very relevant, and he didn't even get to resolve it. And of course, for any viewers watching, if you're interested, that Grievous mat is the mat for the top two for villains during Swiss. It's a really nice looking mat. Dangerous maneuver into the bubble shield. Very useful right now. And a draw. And Dan will be able to roll in both characters and use his 3PO to resolve, but not the faithful, not to pump. Well, he at least has targets. Afro's getting close. Hidden motive for expect damage. Didn't hit the range, hit the resource. Power action right back. That worked out perfectly for Dan. Nickel is going to have another piece of removal that he can use. See a Forsaken in there. Nope. Oh, What's but the Sentinel going to show us? Yeah. Got it. There it is. Wow. That's the play right there. Now he has the uh, the right conditions to cast the second Forsaken out of his hand. Discarding droids day out, since it's not that relevant anymore. There's the two damage again. And he's going to devastate Dan right here. It's not looking that great around for Dan. Uh, definitely not. Six and five, he's got to do 11. 11 damage this turn, which he definitely has the capabilities on board. Especially with the assassin droid added. Right, shield for Dan, of course. Try and get that extra little bit of health. Likes the exit. Biggest die available, or would have been available this round. Nicholas is not going to want to go to another round. For sure. He can help it. And his droids are complying. There goes this riot shield. Fickle, I believe, on a pay side, but Nicola does have the money. I'm assuming at this point Dan is just faking Nicola out, unless it happens to be another EMP. Uh, it's looking pretty, uh, pretty elementary at this point. Nicholas would have to roll pretty badly to not finish things off here. Yeah, and there goes 3PO, thanks to the power action from Theed on Sentinel, and then paying for the Fickle. That looks like shields on Afra. Yeah. Which will be a nail in the coffin. Oh, I believe it's an easy picking in Daniel's hand. It's a pay side for damage. Which he'll take. Yep, that's very smart resolving his dice as they come out, not leaving them open. So that's two away. Not currently showing. Still not showing. Alright, I'm not sure how many cards Nicholas has, but it should end up being enough. That is still one. only one. There's one damage. He's one away. Now he claims. 
Nikola going for a reroll. There it is. Yep. That's the second game. Yep, they're now 1 1. All right, here we go. Yep. Game three of the finals. Ambush off the top. Dan's definitely going to be looking for that disrupt to start things off. Taking away Opera's money yep. uh, can be a very effective strategy. Oh, and Dan with the perfect. He, in roll fact, speed played through it as he R2 fixed as he put the die back in place. I know. That should be a good strong opening for Dan. Respite, so Nikolai gets back some money. <clears throat> it's a Big dangerous, upgrade. dangerous play because if 3PO doesn't hit that resource side, you're losing a ton of value. Oh, for sure. Dan showing good damage, like he usually does. Nick with only a single resource here. See that Sentinel. Well, I think most of his deck is viable, but not there. Apparently not. Probably a deja vu or an act of cruelty. Quite possible. Early four damage into what? Although I don't see Dan getting too much more damage out here. Depends what's in his hand, if he wants to try to reroll or play defensively, or Hans Blaster. Yep, did not need two of those, so rerolling makes sense. At least got a resource out of the deal. I think Dan will be prefer the range side, but would be very happy with that two resource in order to get another two cost worth uh, yep. gun down. Power action from Watt into the BT with Grand Design. Reroll everything but a focus. Hit the one in six for two damage. Nice. And I believe indirect damage as well. Dan setting up for next turn. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, BT1 has larger damage size, does he not? Um, BT1 has the three range for one cost. Oh, it's three, for one. melee for one cost. And the two indirect. I was just thinking because the focus was left on the table. There's a three for one, but he is not have the, uh, the money that he wants. Although, since he did leave the focus on the table, it can be corrected. There's a resource. Gets Dan a card back, although I believe he's already claimed. Yes, the resource side on uh, Mint Streets would indicate that. Was looking for good damage and gets it. So three to Han. Overall, this game is looking much more even as they both got a bit of upgrades and similar damage. Yep. Hand coming in first, so I expect we have some sort of droids day out or similar in Dan's hand. <laughs> Early Sentinel looking for Forsaken, perhaps? Gonna do it again. It's a tempting card. Oh. It'll draw him a card. This is true. Let's him dig further, keep Watt Tambor more alive. So I should point out in this case, although only one damage was physically moved with the with the dangerous maneuver, 
there is still the to same total number of damage, so it can be implied that one damage was lifted and returned to the same character. And looks like Han uh, Dan had Han do four damage over there into Wat Tambor, so he's getting kind of close. <laughs> Power action on the assassin. Action of Watt for the assassin. <laughs> I would assume he will fix the DX at the very least. That's the question here. Do you want to fix two dice so you can only 3 PO once, or do you want to fix one dice? Not a lot of great choices for Dan. There's the first one, and he does the second. That does guarantee the kill on Watt, because I do not expect Nikola has anything that can remove both those dice. It looks like he's not going to remove any of them. Nope. Converts Watt into a resource before he dies. Dan not using 3PO. No, with only one 3PO activation, he couldn't kill the Watt there. He could only resolve one dice for three damage, which would be one short. So he's Fair. going for the guaranteed kill. Fair. And he's going to roll in 3PO to resolve that right resource side. Hasty exit. Nice play. Oh. Probe to make Mean Streets dead. Dan's always got the flea with seen. Oh, another hasty, and there's the flea, as you mentioned. Two resources, of course, with 3PO and R2's die. Damage starting to pile up on both sides of the board. Yep. I believe Nicola just forgot to draw off of taking the indirect. I think you're right. Alright, a little bit of indirect damage from Doc Afro. Dan seems to be passing out here. I expect he's trying to bait Nicola, especially as that assassin droid still has to roll in. I mean, the die is in, but it, you know. Oh, assassin droid calling up blank is not good news for Nicola. <laughs> Does have two blanks, so what's going to happen? For sure. He's giving up some good cards for it. Oh, back where we started. Based on his hand movements, I think he may be getting a little frustrated. Both Forsakens discarded for rerolls. And I believe that's four blanks in a row for the Assassin's Ride. Yep. Nicholas needs to bet on red when he plays roulette. Finally and gets it. There's the damage. Uh, now Dan will claim and use hidden motive. But Assassin Droid survives. Oh, no, because he called range, still gone. Range. But at least he can result, activate and trigger again. <laughs> if, he had, if he had hit that blank one more time. Which he just did on the reactivation. All right. Let's see what Dan's able to do. Five resources here and the battlefield. Chewy. Start things off with the Chewy's blaster. And he takes the damage again. Did you get something useful? No. That would be a discard. 
Uh, not ideal, especially not against an Afro draw deck. Uh, that Afro deck really does need to play out a lot of its cards, so it's not it's not dead, that's for sure. True. There's that deja vu. Oh, and he takes a card. Discard, I think that's a very smart play. Yeah. Well, after the deja vu came down for sure. Wow. Very good hit. Let's see, everybody takes one. And blank. Instigate. Hope. Oh, lots of blanks. Oh, instigate into the droid stay out. That's. Hopefully this goes well for Dan. As though that's a very strong play. Okay, so certainly not perfect, but let's see what Dan's able to accomplish here. Likely turning that Chewie's Blaster into a four. Yep. Faithful Companion. Turn the... for sure. So resolving to kill. Now Dan could have turned that Chewie's Blaster into the three, resolved it for plus one, and not had to pay the resource to kill that Sentinel. We've unfortunately seen him make that over usage twice now. Crash landing the base side. Just to stop that plus as well as get a draw. Dan choosing to discard here. I may have gone for the power action first myself, but oof. Agreed. Just to see if something came out to re-roll at first. All right. Then comes triple zero. Nicola must have drawn it at some point. Dan has now discarded both riot shields for re-rolls. And he hits the range that he needed. Now Nicholas needs to be holding removal. Yep. There's the hidden motive. Gone. Deja vu, hidden motive again. Nice. But which die does he hit? Han. For range, I presume. Didn't hit it. That was Dan have any cards left? I do not believe so. At least the assassin droid is resolvable. As they now both decide what's in each other's graves. And in an ideal situation, Nicholas is showing the ability to do seven damage this turn, which uh, would be a lot, but uh, still leaves Dan in a position to get a good rollout next turn. Actually, looking at how Nicola played, I'm curious to know if he ended up playing. No, he did end up playing the other Nicola early in Swiss. I may have to go look at what the results were. As I feel as though the deep draw that Nicola has would not necessarily be ideal against a mill deck. No, definitely not. Uh, traditionally, Afra has a tough time against mill. There's the max rollout that he needed for that dice, which is enough to take Han off the board. And there it goes. Dan claims. After rolls in for shields. Discarding the dead droid.
Shield was a pretty, pretty big roll. Uh, Dan does have the tools in his deck to win right out here. Uh, and in fact, he already has one of the unblockable guns on the table. I just saw an easy pickings in Dan's hand. Is it worth spending all his resources on an upgrade right now? Those two resources indicate the Rex's blaster. There it is. Now an Ewok ambush or a droid's day out. I don't know that we've seen both. I believe we've only seen one of each. For. Assassin droid to guarantee damage. Does Dan not have a cheat card? He does not. So just Rex's Blaster, which is still maybe enough to do some good damage here. Uh, some very good damage. He's got two range sides showing. So there's his targets for 3PO. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, and that is game. Up. All right, so d officially, I believe that makes Dan the Canadian national champion. Yeah, well done, Dan. Grand champion. So two years in a row, Canadian national champs or grand champs have been won by a Cassell. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much, Steve, for joining us for doing commentary. Thank you. Had a lot of fun.